Hi everyone, it's Norm here. For me, there's a particular song that I listen for that reminds me that warmer weather is just around the corner. And that's the song of the Eastern Whippoorwill. This nocturnal bird is not often seen, more often heard during our long prairie warm evenings. When I was a kid, I would fall asleep listening to this sound. But as I've grown up, it's a sound that I'm hearing less and less. So stay tuned and we'll learn a little bit more about what this unique bird is all about. There's no nice way of saying this. The Eastern Whippoorwill is a bit of a weird looking bird, but that can be said of all members of the Nightjar family. So when we're talking about ID characteristics, the bird is all about camouflage. So you can see on this branch that it's perching on, the whippoorwill has tones of grays and browns. Even their eye, which is quite large, is black, which helps camouflage as they're hunting at night. Speaking of hunting at night, it might be a little bit hard to see in this photo, but if you look close on the head, you can see it has sensory bristles. These bristles aid in catching their insect prey. The beak looks quite small, but they actually have a pretty huge mouth when it's wide open. This is a medium sized bird, about the size of a robin or so. But really, the best way to ID a whippoorwill is by listening to the call, which is its namesake. So I hope you guys can hear the whippoorwill in the background here. I know you probably can't see much. Now you know how the whippoorwill got its name. And that'll be a male. It's only the males that make that call. And uh, they call for uh, attracting females during the breeding season, as well as defending their territory. And I've read that these whippoorwill can actually call for over an hour straight. Don't worry, I won't keep recording that long. The eastern whippoorwill spends its winters throughout the Gulf Coast in the U.S., throughout Mexico, and even into northern Central America. When it comes up here into Canada for nesting and breeding, it's in search of a particular habitat. Habitat is more based on the structure than the composition. So what this means is they're looking for the more open patchy areas to build the nest and to hunt in. They're not looking for any particular sort of plant or tree. But what they are going to do is avoid really mature thick forests with a lot of vegetation in it and on the opposite end of that they're also going to be avoiding these uh, big vast openings with no cover. The eastern whippoorwill has some pretty interesting habits when it comes to the nesting process. So uh, firstly, it starts with the male searching out the home territory. Usually that's about 12 acres or five hectares. Uh, then they'll breed usually in spring and the eggs will be laid uh, June throughout July. Something that's really interesting with the laying is uh, that the female will time the hatching of the chicks to be approximately 10 days before a full moon. The reason that they do this is because a full moon provides optimal lighting for hunting insects for the adults. Uh, those eggs that are laid uh, are laid directly on the ground, usually on leaf litter, so there's no nest. They again rely on the adults great camouflage to protect the eggs and the eggs themselves are creamy colored with a bit of marbled markings which help to camouflage as well. It takes about three weeks for the chicks to hatch and when they do hatch 
the female actually uh, leaves the male to tend to them to himself. So the female will go off and lay a new batch of eggs. So the male has a lot of work cut out for himself actually because the chicks are quite active and they move around a lot. Uh, they do that to make it a little bit harder for predators to find them. Eastern whippoorwill numbers are declining, although it's hard to pinpoint exactly the reason for that. They're a hard bird to study due to the fact that uh, number one, they are a nocturnal bird, and number two, they have that uh, great camouflage. So during the day, you practically have to step on one in order to see it. But we do know a few things. First of all, the uh, annual loss of the Canadian population of eastern whippoorwill is about 3.5%. So that leaves about 70,000 adults in Canada, and here in Manitoba, about 8,000 adults. So reasons that uh, numbers are starting to drop are due to uh, habitat loss, which can be said for most of our species at risk here in southeastern Manitoba. So an example of habitat loss when we're talking about eastern whippoorwill would be forest fire suppression. It's a little ironic that I'm talking about that now because here in Manitoba there are some fires that are out of control. But historically, if we go back the last century or more, we really try to suppress these forest fires and then what's happened is we have a much more mature forest which doesn't tend to be good for the eastern whippoorwill. That's just an example of one uh, area of habitat loss. Uh, loss of insect prey is another reason why numbers are dwindling for the whippoorwill. Overuse of pesticides and even uh, variable climate has really had an impact on our insects and therefore the chain effect has an impact on the whippoorwill. And uh, one that is not quite as high risk for the whippoorwill, but I still thought I would mention it, is a uh, collision rate with vehicles. So the whippoorwill likes to hunt in open areas. So down a country road, uh, a lot of times whippoorwills will actually get hit by vehicles, at least more so than other nocturnal birds. Thanks for tuning in on today's episode. So this summer, remember, keep your ears open and you might be able to hear that beautiful call of the Eastern Whippoorwill. If you're looking for more information, we've uh, provided a free resource for you guys. Uh, we have a species at risk booklet. Has a lot of really pretty pictures of the various species at risk we have here in the Southeast and some more information. You can uh, contact me at SARCommunityLiaison at gmail.com. You can also pick these up at the Arm of Stuart Burns office in the front entrance, and that is in Vita. Thanks for watching again.